to every team listening right now, like some of you, I thought vaping only affected me, but I was wrong. I wish my little brother knew vaping could harm your brain development if you start at an early age. If so, I wouldn't have caught him going through my stuff looking for my vape. I wasn't being a good role model for him. So maybe we should get the facts on vaping before getting into it. It's time to talk about vaping. Watch Malik's full story and get the facts at thefactsnow.com. Welcome to OnlyFans Q&A Live, a question and answer show exclusive to OnlyFans and Miami Dolphins Discord server. Now here's your host, Alf. And we're on, and this is a special edition of OnlyFans Q&A Live. We are on OnlyFans right now. And if you want to participate on these Q&A Live shows, you can become a member of OnlyFans. And the way you become a member is you go to discord.gg forward slash OnlyFans, and you become a member there for $3 a month. All right, so Jalen Waddle is extended three years, $84.75 million going forward. The way we work it is like this. If you work your way over to Spotrack, okay, and I'm going to show you some of the, the great work that was done on this contract. And we're going to round this off because uh, I don't know how the hell you arrive at a cap hit of $8,618,270. Like, why do you have $270 attached to, to the con? But we're just going to go round numbers, all right? So we're going to go 8.6. And then uh, you have the fifth year option, which is at 15.5, right? Which puts you at 24.1. And then let's say he, he earns every single dollar, and let's just round it off to 85. That's $109 million owed over the next five years if he earns every single penny his average owed will be 21.8 million dollars for every season for the next five years that is a bargain now let's uh by the way his agent is joel siegel uh who has been a long time agent down here uh happy for him as well uh if you know who Joel Siegel is, he's very well connected to Mark Hockman of the Hockman and Crowder show. So I'm, I don't know if Hockman is in, in town tonight. I know he wasn't on his show. So who knows? Maybe he'll have Joel Siegel on. But this is a damn good deal. We're going to compare it to another deal they got done. Devonta Smith. All right. Now, remember where we arrived at. We arrived at 21.8 owed, okay? Now, we're going to take Devonta Smith's number, which was a, a three-year, $75 million contract, okay? Although his guarantee number was much, much lower, but we're just going to assume because it's fair to assume that Devonta Smith and Jalen Waddle will earn every single penny on these deals. They're going to be in their primes going forward, so... They're essentially owed the same amount of money this year, okay? Their cap hits are almost identical. Jalen Waddles is 400000 more. Uh, remember that Devonta Smith signed an extension, and he has four void years, okay? So we're not going to do the, the actual cap hits. We're going to do the cash owed, and... You could figure this out pretty simply if you go to, to Spotrack and you do their cap pits per year and you figure it going forward and it's 8.1, it's 7.6, it's 11. We're just rounding off here, okay? And it takes you pretty much to the same amount of time because then you have the void years, right, going forward. And the percentage of the cap is as follows, three, two, we're just rounding off here, okay? Three, three, four, four, six percent, and then the void years come in at 3.5, two, and two, okay? If we do the void years, which you have to, okay, which is 22, it's another 30, with 34, divided by five, puts you at... 
Okay. Jalen Waddle's costing you $2 million more. This is a good deal. It put you right in line with Devonta Smith's contract and below Amon Ross St. Brown's. So it's a pretty damn good deal. All right. So we're going to go to audience members now. And if anybody has a question, you could just step on in. And I will bring you on. And you could ask your questions. Uh, let me see if there's any. Okay. Uh, here's the first question. Is this a typical Brandon Shore style contract that allows for restructuring? Yeah, they all do. Uh, all contracts in the NFL can be restructured. Uh, and yeah, it's fully guaranteed. So you can move it around as much as you want. Uh, getting Somebody says getting this deal done before Chase and CD was absolutely crucial. Yes. Um, although those two guys are going to get much bigger deals. Those two guys will dictate whatever Tyreek Hill gets on a one-year extension if they offer him a one-year extension. Um, all right, uh, we have somebody here that's going to come up. If anybody else wants to come up here and ask any questions, you can. Uh, anybody else, all you got to do is just get in the queue, and I will bring you on. All right, as I bring you on, if I do bring you on, let me see if there's anybody else in the queue. Okay, they dropped off. Okay, some were asking about, you know, how does this affect to his deal you know, right around the corner. This means that they've already agreed to the structure because this is a three-year deal. You got to allow for that, right? Remember, Tua's contract extension will begin uh, the following year. It begins in 2025, right? So you got to have the, the structure already set for 2025 because Waddle is on the is on the, the fifth-year option. So, you know, I don't think that they're touching that uh, because it's an extension. So... Tua's structure has to be ready for 2025 since Waddle is counting for like 15.5 15, 15 in 2025. This means that the structure for Tua's contract starts off low, which is pretty much how they start all these deals. I would expect Tua's contract to be something very similar to what Jalen Hurts got. So, you know, you're talking about very low cap charges to start his contract. All right, there's somebody else in the queue. I'm going to bring you up. As I bring you up, identify yourself so that way the audience knows who you are. All right, you're up. Hey, hey, Alf, this is Zidane. Uh, this is great news today. Um, I guess my question is, what is your favorite Waddle memory of his time so far on the team? You know what? That's a, that, that's a good question. I think it's an obvious one, man. I, I think it's uh, third and 21 against the Buffalo Bills. Catching the the deep post, uh, that was a heck of a catch, man. <laughs> yeah, that that led to the defeat of uh, the, the only time that Miami, that uh, Mike McDaniel and Tua Tungvaloa have defeated the Buffalo Bills. They're one and three against them. So yeah, that was that was my favorite moment. By the way, uh, Jalen Waddle seems to have his moments against the Bills. He had that big game against the Bills in the snow as well. So you know, this is a good deal. Uh, he was a, a fabulous draft pick, three consecutive 1,000 yard seasons to start his career. So this is a this is very very good news going forward. It also, and I do believe this, it signals that they have a structure in mind with Tua Tagovailoa. Uh, I do believe that the last one to get signed, at least this season, will be Javon Holland. I, I think they might take a wait and see uh, mode with him. Uh, Jalen Phillips, I think you want to see him play the season. And he's the one that could cost a ridiculous amount of money. If Jalen Phillips just fires off one of those six seasons this year, uh, who knows? We might have ourselves a Christian Wilkins situation on our hands. But remember, they still have the, the nuclear option, which is they can move off of Bradley Chubb in a year. And they could just essentially just hand that money to Jalen Phillips. It It could be as simple as that. Yeah, I could see that happening. I'm really excited about the core they've put together, and I think we've got a great season ahead. So uh, thanks for all the work you do. I'll uh, let someone else jump in. All right, cool. 
if anybody else uh, has any other questions, I could bring you up. Uh, this is our reaction show on OnlyFans. We have a pretty big crowd in the audience. Uh, this is good news. This is, this is really, really good news. It's it's good to see that, that fans are pretty excited for Jalen Waddle. He's one of the good guys on this team. And I understand... Uh, you know, some were saying, oh, you know, he was injured last year. And this, he is tough as nails, okay? If he couldn't play in a game, there was something really, really wrong with him. And I know for a fact he wanted to play against the Buffalo Bills at the end of the season last year. But they wanted to essentially save him from himself. Uh, more questions in the chat. Sorry for going back to Tua, but do you think Miami is waiting until June 2nd to announce the deal on Tua? Uh, I don't think I don't think that that matters at all because they don't need any of Xavier Howard's money. They need Xavier Howard's money to plan long term and to to plan short term, as in probably adding a little bit more depth to the either the interior offensive line or the secondary, namely the safeties. Uh, if anybody else wants to get into, get in the queue, you can. We're going to do at least fifteen minutes here on this reaction show. Uh, does this signal that Tyreek's time is coming to an end in two years when Waddle's number goes up? They can't afford two high-paid receivers, can they? Well, the the Eagles are managing to do just that, okay, at least for the short term. And the Bengals, I think, will attempt to do something similar to that. I think Tyreek's time is coming to an end because he's 30 years old, so... I do believe Tyreek is probably gone after the 2025 season, which means that he's here for two seasons. I think at best they extend him a year. Uh, some were saying, oh, you know, good that they got this done before Jamar Chase and CeeDee Lamb. I don't think Waddle had anything to do with those two guys, but I think Tyreek Hill does. So if you're going to give Tyreek Hill new cash for 2026 – it's going to have to come in line with what C.D. Lamb and Jamar Chase are getting. So, uh, here's another question. Uh, does the extension void the fifth-year option? No, it does not. Or do we have him on that as well? I think, believe they have him on that as well. If they already exercise it, that means it's it's done. It's $15.5 million guaranteed for next season. Uh, do you think Ross had a hand in this deal? Uh, he really does not. Remember, they operate under the salary cap, so so this is not like Major League Baseball. And Major League Baseball, the owner tells you, look, you have a $150 million budget, and you can devote $120 million of it to players and your payroll. So you look at your numbers, and you're like, oh, well, we're going to go over here a million or two. I got to call the owner to see if he's all right funding this bill. Uh, that doesn't work like that in the NFL. In the NFL, you already have a set budget. You have a salary cap. So, Stephen Ross already knows what the team is going to cost him this year. So, you don't really have to, you know, consult with him. He already knows that the money's coming out. When you have to consult with him, it's for extensions where new cash is going to be laid out because he has to start writing checks for that stuff. You know? So, he knew this was coming. So that's not an issue. Do you think Ross, this is another question, do you think Ross had a hand? Okay, this is the same question. Do you think they could try to use some of that $18.5 million to front load to his contract to lessen cap hits down the road, protect themselves? I'm not so sure. Remember, you have two 50-year options going down, okay? And since you have two 50-year options going down, that's all guaranteed money against the cap. I would say that to his first year for a fact will be a low cap number. And I'm willing to I'm 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 just guessing here. I would say to his first 3 seasons under his new contract are going to be low cap charges, very similar to Jalen Hurts. You're betting on a long career that you could keep revisiting this contract over and over and over again to keep lowering cap hits and keep building the team around him. But I think for the first three years, it's going to be pretty low cap figures. All right. Somebody else is in the queue. I will bring you up. Uh, identify yourself so that way the audience knows uh, who you are. All right. You're up. Hey, this is uh, Ultimate Hurt uh, 17. So can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. All right. Perfect. 
So yeah, I'm just looking at the uh, the sport track cap numbers here, and, and if I did my math right, it's about 20 million per year for Jalen Waddle. Yep, that puts him right around Amari Cooper, Chris Godwin type contracts. I mean, I can't tell you how stoked I am for this. This is, in my yeah. mind, Jalen Waddle top although, five, I, top ten at least. Yeah, I hate to interrupt. We're getting you, but, on a, Yeah, I hate to interrupt you, but uh, yeah, if you work out some of the cash, like it's some of it gets really, really complicated. It does come out to somewhere around twenty one point eight per year. All right, I mean twenty one point eight, twenty million. That still puts him right around like T Higgins type deal, and I, and T Higgins is good. Um, maybe like Mike Evans, but th- those are little older deals. And we're getting on the like the most recent deal for the next five years. You got to figure these contracts are going to be well above what we're paying him. I just don't know how Career did it, and I I got to give the guy credit because this is a great deal for us. We we just locked up one of the top 10 wide receivers in the league at, at the very least top 10 i think uh and you know i think he's got a lot more to show here i mean i i just i, I am so excited about this this is just just too amazing for us i mean i, I can't believe it yeah, yeah uh, you got to get the greer's props though this, this is tremendous yeah the way you test this is let's say jalen waddle not that he was ever going to make it but let's say he made it to the open market he would have gotten five years 150 million i i agree absolutely Okay, so you're getting somewhere around an eight million dollar a year savings. Yeah, this is this is good business. <laughs> okay, this is good business. Simple as that. It just is. Yep, I agree. It's uh, just too good to be true. I'm just over the moon ecstatic. This is great news. Made my day. Yeah. So yeah, that the one that I think might be a little bit more contentious is uh, going forward is J- uh, is Javon Holland. You know, uh, I, I agree because because. With Javon Holland, you know, I, I don't see them valuing safety like they do wide receiver. Uh, especially, I mean, the last time we gave a big contract was Rashad Jones to a, to a safety. And, you know, that was, you know, a lot older. So there's a little difference there. Yeah, Rashad Jones um, was a fabulous player. But if you remember that fabulous, contract, if you remember that contract. It's terrible. It was yeah, a terrible I, contract. The Dolphins basically ate most of that contract because he was always injured. I agree. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, Javon Holland's a little younger. So maybe, maybe they, they do value that. Um, and we'll see. We'll see what he wants because that that's really what it's going to come down to. Because he he wants to play ball with us and stay with Miami Dolphins. I I think obviously we'll try to work something out there. But uh, you know, one year left on his deal. If they don't get something done this year, I uh, you get I don't know what they're thinking. You know, he's, he'll, he'll probably be gone. So he hits open market. He's going to be paid, paid way more than I think we're going to want to pay him. Yeah, and I uh, think it's sad yeah. truth. Yeah, and people that are. Comp- Comparing him to Antoine Winfield, don't. Antoine Winfield last year, uh, I was almost shocked, shocked at the season he had. Antoine Winfield had a Defensive Player of the Year season last year for the Tampa Bay Bucks. Don't compare Javon Holland to that, even as good as we may think Javon Holland is. He yeah, but the open market. The yeah, open but, market's going to do that. Yeah, they're going to compare it to him. Yeah, the open the open market's going to say, you know what, he can be that because he's he's three years younger. You know, and he, and he might be because you know, he, like you said, he's three years younger, young guy, sending player, um, and the right defense that could happen. Yeah. But we haven't seen it yet, so can you really be paying him that money if you haven't seen it yet? Yeah, and I I mean, do, he's good. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, and, but and he's I, not that. But I do really believe that the, the only one that could catch Miami by surprise is Jalen Phillips, for for two reasons. Okay, put yourself in Jalen Phillips's shoes. If the Dolphins went out and said, "Look, Jalen, we believe in you." Here's $75 million for five years, okay, which will put you somewhere around the 18th or 19th highest paid edge rusher in football. He's going to say no. He's going to bet on himself. He's going to say, you know what? I'm going to fire off a 15-sack season here, and you're going to owe me $30 million a year, or I'm going to hit the open market, or I'm going to force you to, to, to franchise tag me for $22 million a year, you know? So yeah. I think that's the one that has the. I think Javon Holland is a wait and see situation. I think that the Jalen Phillips one is the one that, and it's only because he had the Achilles. Okay, because he had the Achilles, it's it's not that you're betting against them; is that you're being cautious. You know, you're just being cautious about it, especially since you just drafted Chop Robinson and Mo Kamara. So you you feel as as if you're securing some of the future. You know. Mm-hmm. And yep, yep. you're you're essentially just leveraging Jalen Phillips against Bradley Chubb. You're basically saying, well, if Jalen Phillips is going to break the bank on us, he's going to break the bank at the expense of Bradley Chubb's money. 
<laughs> you know? Uh, I think that that's how that will work out. Yeah, and in that case, I mean, you would think Chubb would be the one on the chopping block and of not course. Phillips. Yeah, yeah, of course. Because I mean, he's just because because he's got the age advantage there. He'd want to keep the younger guy. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. All right, man. You have anything else? Uh, no, I think that's it. Thanks for uh, taking my questions and just talking to me overall. All right, appreciate man. it. All right, thank All you. Right. All right, I'm going to take a couple more questions, and then we'll we'll be done here. And remember, uh, tomorrow we have the offseason, Merrick Brave and I. Uh, I guess we will talk a little bit about this deal. Uh, somebody writes in into the chat, AJ Brown is at 32. Yes, he is, 32 million AAV. Uh, people are pointing out that Devonta Smith got 25 million less in guaranteed money and saying the Dolphins got worked here. Is that guaranteed money make any real-world difference? No, it does not. Both guys will see every single penny of these deals, every single penny. Okay. Um, uh, somebody points out no because Waddle isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Would you bet on uh, on no other Dolphin wearing seventeen ever again? Yeah, uh, I think. Well, look, Waddle's already had a pretty damn good start to his career. Three consecutive one thousand yard seasons. It stands to reason he's going to be the all time leading receiver in team history. Okay, like that's a fact. That's his trajectory right now. Okay. Uh, a couple more here. Uh, do you think Phillips could be the odd man out due to injuries and the depth we just drafted? Uh, yeah, I just explained that. Yeah, yeah, I just explained it pretty much exactly. Uh, he breaks the bank. He breaks it at Bradley Chubb's expense, or he breaks the bank somewhere else. You know. All right. And uh, somebody writes in Justin Jefferson over under thirty six point five million AAV. I'm gonna go just under. With a massive guarantee. And you got to understand, man, about guaranteed dollars here. I mean, guys are going to be here. Who gives a shit? It's not your money. <laughs> you know? They're going to be here. Like, these guys are going to be here. Like, uh, Waddle's under contract for five years. I expect them to be here for five years, at least. Yes. So, it is what it is. It's a good deal. Um... Uh, somebody else writes in, and this will be the last one we'll take. Uh, Achilles is a two-year injury. Would be shocked if JP has over 10 sacks this year. Yeah. Uh, you know, I would venture to guess he plays 10 games this year. You know, maybe he's maybe he's on the field sooner. But if he's on the field sooner, I would think, I would just say that, I would think that he would be playing at a, on a limited basis. We'll see in training camp. We'll see what he looks like in training camp, see – what his workload looks like on training in training camp, and then we could, you know, make a little bit more informed proclamations on Jalen Phillips, twenty twenty four. All right, that's it. Uh, there is no more. Uh, congratulations, Jalen Waddle, three years, eighty four point seven five million dollars, uh, seventy six of it guaranteed. Congratulations, and this is OnlyFans. Q&A live, a special edition. Again, if you want to become a member, you go to discord.gg forward slash OnlyFans. And you become a member there for $3 a month. See you when we see you. Thanks for listening to OnlyFans Q&A live. Welcome to Infinity of Coconut Creek, where excellence meets affordability. As the number one dealer in Florida and second in the world, we're on the fast track to global domination. Drive off in a new vehicle for $279 a month. Our certified pre-owned vehicles come with unlimited mild warranty plus. Plus, enjoy up to $15,000 in dealer incentives on select new models. Experience rates as low as 1.9%. Don't miss out on this unbeatable offer. Visit us today at Infinity of Coconut Creek and join the journey to automotive excellence. Your dream ride awaits. Dear teens out there, like you, I also thought vaping was cool, but I was proven wrong when my life changed entirely. I thought I was going to have the best year with my cheerleading squad, but it's hard to cheer with just one lung. And I thought vaping wouldn't affect the ones I love, but my mom had to give up everything to take care of me. She watched me begin to die next to her. It's time to talk about vaping. Watch Walker's full story and get the facts at thefactsnow.com.